Hey everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to create a responsive website in less than 20 minutes without writing a single line of CSS. As you might know, Bootstrap is the most popular CSS framework used around the world. It makes it easier to build great looking mobile first responsive websites. I'll be making more tutorials in this series that'll teach you how to use pre-made components such as nav bars, modals, and accordions along with Bootstrap's responsive CSS grid system to quickly create interactive websites without writing a single line of CSS or JavaScript. So if you're interested, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Comment below if you have any questions or if there's anything new that you'd like to learn. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird, and here on my channel, I'm here to help you build confidence in coding. Now let's not waste any more time, get your favorite code editor ready, and let's start coding. I've got a project folder for our Bootstrap 5's website. Now it has an index.html file and an IMG folder with a bunch of images that are loyalty free, and they're from Pixabay. All right, so let's start getting our code ready. So we're going to need a starter template. So let's go to getbootstrap.com to get that. Okay, so here on bootstrap.com, we'll open up docs and we'll scroll down to the second one. And now it has a link for the starter template that includes Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript. So we're going to paste that at the top of our file here. And let's call this build a web page using Bootstrap 5. Now we're not going to need this h1 tag for now, so let's delete that and create some room for our content. I plan on building a website about touring Canada. Now it'll be a single page scrolling website, and I'd like to start with a nav bar and a carousel. So let's prepare for both. And we can grab the nav bar from getbootstrap.com. So we're going to scroll down to the component section, and there you can find the nav bar. And I'm going to scroll down until I find a nav bar that I like. Okay, I like this one, so I'll copy the code for that and I'll add it to my markup. Now we need to update it a bit. There's a logo here, which is just the word nav bar. I'm going to replace it with a logo that I already have saved. Now it's an image in my IMG folder. So I'll source out that image and it's called logo.jpg. Now we also want to remember to use an alt tag. And we also need to give this a height. Now I tend to use something like 80 or 100 to start. So let's start with 80. And for the navigation links, uh, home is okay. For the second one, I'd like to have destinations. And then we're gonna have an about and a contact us section. Now we can remove this disabled class because we don't want that to be grayed out in our navigation. And because this is a single page scrolling site, I'm going to have IDs further down in the page and I'm going to target those IDs here in the anchor tag. So let's call this destinations and we'll point to about. And lastly, we'll have another href for the contact us section, which will point to an ID of contact. Let's have a look at this in the browser using our live server. It looks good, nice and simple. It's exactly what I was expecting. Okay, let's move on to our carousel. Now, again, we need to go to getbootstrap.com to get the right component or the right carousel for the page. So I'm going to go down and scroll down to carousel, which is also in the component section. Now, there are a few carousels to pick from. Uh, I like the second one with indicators, so I'll copy that markup and we'll paste it right here in our index.html. Now, this carousel comes with three slides, but I'd like to add a fourth one. So let's go ahead and add an extra indicator button. So I'll duplicate the last one and we'll point to number three. And if we scroll down, and actually let's change the slide to four, and then let's scroll down and add one more carousel item. Now let's grab some images. So I'll start with the lighthouse. Let's get geese next. I think I'll get mountains next. And lastly, let's get falls. And let's not forget the alt tag as well. I'm going to change all the alt tags. It's 
a good idea to be particular about these sort of things. I always like to fill them in. Okay, so now that we have our alt tags, let's have a look at this in the browser. Okay, it looks good. Our indicators are showing. Perfect, it's looping through them nicely. All right, so now we wanna move on to our main content. And I'm gonna put everything in a main container. So here we're gonna use Bootstrap's div with a class of container. Okay, and I also like to mention the end of the container because it gets easy to get mixed up with all of our divs. Now I want most of the content of the web page to be in this container. So we'll start with an H1 and we'll say Tour Canada Today. Okay, now it looks very simple. So let's add some styling from Bootstrap. So what I'll do is I'll tech center this. I will also give it some padding. So I'll use P-5, which is the highest degree of padding using Bootstrap. And then margin bottom-5 and margin top-5. That looks good. All right, next I want to have a div with a paragraph. Now let's put lorem 100 in here. Now I'd like this div to have a background color and span the entire width of the container. So let's give this div a class of W100, which will fill up the container's entire width, which is not exactly going to the edges of the browser, but close enough. And that's because it's in a class of container div. And then we're also going to give it a background color, let's say dark subtle. And let's also give this a margin and padding. That looks good. All right, I think I'd like to add a button though. It looks a little empty without a button. So let's say we have a button. Now we could create a button like this, or we could go right to Bootstrap's website and get one from there. So let's actually delete this button and let's get one from getbootstrap.com. So again, in the components, we'll grab a button. Now they have different sizes and colors. I'd like to get a large button. So let's grab this first large button here. We'll say book your trip now. Okay, it's starting to look a little nice. All right, so let's move on to our next section. Now I wanna have an H2 tag because I don't wanna repeat my H1 tag again. And this I'll call popular destinations. Now we also wanna remember that we wanna give this an ID of destinations because we're targeting this from our nav bar. And then we wanna give it some styling as well. I want this to look like large text, similar to an H1 tag, but I didn't want to use an H1 again. So I can use Bootstrap's class system called FS-1, and that gives it a font size of the heading one. So we've got FS-1, and let's also give this some padding, and margin top, and margin bottom. And let's also center this text. Okay, I like it. Now in this section, I'd like to have three separate columns that are responsive, and in each column, I'd like to have a card. So an image, some text, maybe a button within each card. Okay, let's go to Bootstrap site and get some cards. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get the cards, we need to plan out our columns. So we need a div with a class of row, and inside of it, we need another div with a class of call in which we can place these cards. And then we'll have card one, Let's go ahead and get our card. Okay, again, it's in the component section. This first one looks nice. I'm just gonna grab that and we'll paste that here. And let's give it a title of, let's say Banff. And for the paragraph, let's just say Lorem, maybe 30. And for the image, let's source out maybe mountains. And let's just put mountains in here as the alt tag. And for the button, instead of go somewhere, let's say read more. Okay, and let's have a look in the browser. Not bad, I like it. All right, now we're gonna need to copy this div a few more times. So let's duplicate this two more times. And we'll call the second one card two, and the last one card three. And let's also rename the titles. So this one can be maybe Peggy's Cove, and we can point to the lighthouse image. And let's also change the 
alt tag to say lighthouse. And lastly, let's have a section for Yukon and capture the Yukon image. Now, before we look at these in the browser, I see something that I should have deleted. This style with a width of 18 rems. We need to get rid of that. Now that's just something Bootstrap uses because this is how it, they display their cards in the browser on their web page. So now that we've gotten rid of that, I think the rest of the code looks nice and clean. Let's have a look at this in the browser now. Okay, and we can stretch this and we shrink it and it's responsive and it looks great. Okay, let's move on to the About Us section now. So in the About section, I'd like to have four blocks. Now in each block, I want to have an H2 or an H3 and a paragraph tag. And maybe give them a different background color and, and make them look like squares or rectangles. But I only want to have two take up the width of the browser. So I want to have two and then two below. So let's take advantage of Bootstrap's 12 grid system and use a call-6 class and apply it to each block. So now we have our About section. And before we start, let's copy that same H2 that we have up here and use that for consistency. And we'll use that here, and we'll also use that for our contact us. So this will be great to divide the area, and at the same time, it'll have a consistent look and feel. So we'll say about, and for this one, we'll say contact us. Now, in the about section, let's have a div with a class of row. And then we'll have another div with a class of call-6. And inside of that, let's have another div, which will have a P tag with maybe lorem50, let's say. And I also wanted a heading in here. So let's add an H2, and maybe we'll say rates for this one. Okay, looks okay, but there's no styling. So let's give this a class of mm, maybe background color dark. We'll give it some white text. We'll give it some padding, some margin, and the top and the bottom. Okay, it looks good, but it looks pretty dark. So let's not go with that dark color. Let's change this to secondary. Oops, just a dark gray. Okay, I like that, looks better. And now that we have that set up, let's copy this div with a call of six three more times. And then we can just change the details. So we'll change maybe the H2 tags, so fees. For here, we might say popular sites. Maybe we'll have one called features. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, not bad. It's starting to take some shape. I don't like that they look so boring though. Everything's gray and white. So why don't we mix it up a bit? Maybe we can take these two that are diagonal from one another and change the background color and maybe the text color. So we'll grab the second and the third and instead of this background secondary and this white text, let's delete that. And now let's make it the same color we had up above. Background color dark, subtle. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll get rid of the text white and change it to dark, subtle. Oh, I like it. It already looks better. What do you guys think? I like it. Okay, so now that we have our About section, let's work on the Contact Us section. I don't really have that much information that I want to put in the Contact Us section. So let's go ahead and grab the paragraph from the beginning of this website. We'll copy it and it's styling down below, so it'll give it a consistent look and feel. Okay, so we're going to grab this. So copy that and let's paste that in the Contact Us section. Now I'd like to link to an email, so let's change this text out of here. We'll add an anchor tag, and here we can say contact us for more information. Oops, information. And now for the H reference, we can then refer to an email address. So mail to maybe abc at def.com. Okay, everything's fine except I don't see the text, and it is there, it's just coming up kind of blue, a darker blue, and there's an underlying. So let's get rid of that. So again, we'll target this anchor tag and we'll change the styling using Bootstrap. And uh, let's change this to text white and to get rid of that underline, text decoration none. 
Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Great. Now let's move on to the next section. Now I want to have a footer at the bottom, but it's going to look kind of boring to go straight from some text to a footer. So let's add another section with an image in it. So I'm just going to copy this H2 tag here. And let's change this to relax in beautiful Canada. Now let's add an image here. So we'll grab the vacation image. Now let's see how this looks. Okay, it looks good, but half of the image is getting cut off, or at least a portion of it is. Yeah, you can see there's a lot more to this image. So let's fix that and give it a class of W100. Now I could also use W-50 or W-75, which is basically going to take up 50% or 75% of the width of the container that it's in. So we want it to fill up the entire container, so let's use W-100. That looks really good. Okay, now let's work on our footer. And let's also add some margin at the bottom because I feel that we need some more space. So now we have a footer, and I just want a P tag in here. And we'll say and copy and maybe we'll say tour Canada today. I also want an email us link so let's set that up. So I'll set up an anchor tag and inside of it I'll say email us but let's not forget to grab this H reference from up above and we'll paste that in here. Okay, Let's check out our footer. Okay it's kind of boring and plain. Let's give it some background color as well. So we'll target the footer, give it a class of BG, let's say dark. Um, let's also give it some margin top five and maybe some padding and maybe text white, maybe even text center that would look nice. Okay, I like it, but I don't like this blue link at the bottom. So let's give this some styling as well. So we'll change this to text white. Okay, it looks good. Hmm, wait a minute, it doesn't look that good. Uh, I don't like that the footer doesn't go to the sides of the browser, so let's fix that. And that's because the footer is inside of our container. So let's cut the ending div out, or the closing div out, and place it here, and then our footer just below it. Much better, I like it. Okay, now let's also not forget to fill in our different IDs. So we did the destination ID. Uh, let's fill in the second one, which is about. And then we have a contact ID. So we'll change that to contact. And then I think we might have an extra. Yeah, we have this extra one. Let's get rid of this from our beautiful Canada photo. Okay, let's test out our navigation links. So let's try destinations. Okay, it works. About also works. Contact us. Beautiful. Everything works smoothly. Let's also test it out in responsive mode. So if I grab contact us, still works. Perfect. Okay, so I've expanded it to the full width of the browser. I like it. When I shrink it down, it still looks nice. I really like it. What do you guys think? Do you like our site? All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new today and you found some value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Comment below with any questions or if you just have comments on the website that we made today or if you just want to say hi. I'd love to hear from my viewers. All right, everyone, I hope you have a lovely week. Until next time, keep on coding.